G'day folks. Oh, I'm just giving the RAV4 a little bit more attention. I picked up a bottle of uh, what is it, Auto Glim vinyl and rubber care the other day just to try and get this vinyl soft top back to a reasonable condition but I realised I have to replace the uh, Velcro and pretty much everything. I mean it's not too bad but the problem is the vinyl is shrinking and making it hard to zip up and hard to keep the Velcro on. I mean, it will work still, but there's not much left, so it all needs to be replaced. The PVC has been attacked by salt and UV radiation and dirt and other stuff, just neglect. Unfortunately, they put brand new um, vinyl in this before, before they got the uh, roadworthy. It's only a few years old, but because they never drove the car, it sat around and uh, a combination of sea salt and or just general sea air and dirt plus UV has completely destroyed the uh, bottom half of the back window. I'm hoping it'll pass roadworthy but if it has to be replaced it has to be replaced. We do do a lot of vinyl or a bit of vinyl sewing at my work making pool covers the old vinyl covers so we've got the machinery to do it at work so I'll just talk to the boss and just see if I can uh, spend a couple of hours on the machines and just I'll buy the uh, clear plastic clear PVC and stitch it up myself should be easy enough but yeah the plastic conditioner works well on all this sort of thing that's come up nicely even the little rear brake light center rear brake light just going over it got the mud flaps off because they're badly oxidized and well chalky they're polypropylene there's a chalky polypropylene residue on them so I'll give them a good clean up. I'll try a few different restoration techniques on it. If not, I'll get the uh, spray can of uh, polypropylene conditioner, spray it with that, and then spray paint it black. A bit of matte black epoxy or something. You can paint polypropylene, but you must get the proper adhesion promoter, which is designed specifically for stuff like automotive bumpers and things like that. It's a professional grade thing, it's not cheap. I think it's about $18 for a regular spray can, but it goes a long way. You don't need an awful lot of it. Generally two coats does what I do. So yeah, there's not much I can do about the scrapes and things without fully repainting things. I do want to fix that, but still, it's in an awkward spot. Looks like the pre one of the previous owners grazed a concrete pillar or something like that. But underneath it's not too bad. I'm just going to get some rust converter onto some of the arms and things like that. Being a seaside car, there's no real rust in the structure. Toyota rust proof these very well. But a lot of the uh, suspension rods and arms are quite rusty. So I'm going to get some uh, phosphoric acid based kill rust primer and just paint it over things. Doesn't matter if it looks a bit ugly as long as it stops the rust. I'll paint everything flat black afterwards after doing the kill rust process and it shouldn't look too bad at all actually. I've just got to jack the back end up and go for it. I even just drive up onto ramps so I don't have to take the wheels off yet. A bit of flat um, high temp enamel, or not enamel, but just uh, pot belly black over the exhaust. Apart from that it's not too bad. Very soft plastic panels but that's alright, you can bump them around and it won't hurt. <laughs> It's all polypropylene. Not a bad thing in some ways, but they are expensive to fix. As a few people pointed out, you run the spare tire into the something as you're backing up, it'll push the center of the back door in and buckle the whole thing. And it has happened once, at least partially. They've ever so slightly bumped something with the spare and it's just on a slight angle, so I might try and get a steel, I'll see if I can bolt a big steel bar across this stud pattern, I'll just make a flange up for it, bolt a bar to it and just try and reef it back up into play, into shape, because it's got, there's four bolts holding the thing on, so I'll just see if I can straighten that out, it's not a big issue but I don't know, I don't have money to spend on it getting the clutch done yet so I figure I'll do zero dollar items at the moment. Maybe spend 20 or 30 bucks on some speakers. 
I don't know. I want to replace the speakers, take the seats out, clean the interior up properly. Yeah, we'll try and do two things at once. Save for the clutch kit and uh, just spend a little bit of money doing the interior up and a bit of exterior. So, yeah. And as a few people pointed out, it's a five link independent rear end. They're not half bad actually. Nice that it's got a new rear support mount on the differential. Well, almost new. I think it'd be <laughs> lucky to have 5,000 Ks on it since it's still got its original paper sticker on it. Well, I figured I'd try taking the top down for the first time, especially since it's such a nice day. Probably one of the last for a while, given the weather changes towards winter. But yeah, each window comes out as a separate unit. I think that's top there. Yep. So, you just got to unzip the thing and unhook it from the underside. It hooks in under there. So I've got to do that with the other side and the back one. It's not like some soft tops where you can leave the windows in and the whole lot sort of folds in. You've actually got to remove them one by one. I would actually like a uh, just a temporary stretch over type top that bridges over the back. Sort of like you see on some of the old Land Cruisers like the BJ40s and things like that. I wouldn't mind something like that just as an emergency if it does start raining in the middle of summer when I've got the, uh, the top off. So I've got a feeling I'll be leaving it off for a couple of days at a time if it's going to be a nice week. Okay, well, the only negative point I have to give this car is this crossbar. It does make cargo area access a little bit difficult. I don't think it's removable either, at least not structurally. So there's nothing up here between the back and front. It might be removable, but then there's nowhere for the door and the uh, bottom edge of the soft top to seal onto, because the bottom edge of the back window hooks on there. It's only, it looks like extruded alloy, it's not even steel. It's extrusion. So it's bolted in, probably through there. I'm just wondering if it's worth making a proper um, roll bar and a fixed soft top, a removable top that doesn't fold down. Because the uh, replacement top for these is not cheap. It costs more than what this vehicle cost me. I think it's like 3,200 euro for one. So that's more than what I paid for this. But yeah, if I can get rid of that, I'd be really happy. But I'm gonna have to uh, work out a more detailed um, attachment system for the top because that's got a rubber gasket across it in there and keeps the water out so yeah it's the only only negative I give this car is that damn crossbar mind you there's a uh, two-door hard top that I'm looking at down the road it's kind of tempting me <laughs> it's really tempting me to pick it up I'm sure this little uh, Little ravi girl would like a uh, friend to keep her company in the backyard. I don't know. <laughs> Not that I don't have enough cars. I've got the Micro and the Festiva. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. I bought this one for two and a half. If I can pick the other one up for two to two and a half, that's still not bad. Anyway, I've got to clean out the back here and get on to cleaning the carpets and replacing these speakers. I've got to pull these whole panels out to get to them. So it means everything out, including junky old laptops. It's an old Pioneer one. <laughs> it's big and heavy and missing everything. <laughs> Most of these laptops are pretty much rubbish. They've been well and truly uh, pick picked for bits. Yeah. Missing display and everything like that. Anyway, I'll see if I can get this top to come off. And that's the window. There's really not much to it. Oh, there you go. RAV4 finally gets the top off. <laughs> Pretty straightforward too. These bits here hook in under there. Assuming you can. It's a sequential thing. 
know, you've got latches up in there. Yeah, you need two hands to do it, but you get the idea. Yeah, it's not too hard. Getting some silicon spray onto the uh, zippers made things a lot easier. The last time I tried this, all the zippers got stuck. But spraying them with uh, that stuff makes a profound difference. They're not jamming anymore. So, yeah. Could be done in a short amount of time if you had to. <laughs> it's still not too bad. I won't give it it's not incredibly complicated or time consuming but it's not something you want to do in a real hurry it's not like pushing a button and having servo motors do it all for you like a lot of modern convertibles and things that and making sure that goes under there and doesn't cover your tail lights I've got to clean this out there's too much junk in here <laughs> I'll throw a lot of this stuff in the bin or the shredder. I have to build a shredder and finish off these laptops and things. The Xboxes I think somebody wanted. That's about it. Anyway. There you go. She's got her top off for the first time in quite a few years. Quite a lot of years actually. I don't think they ever took the top off this. The last owner. It's reasonably well made, but yeah, there's a lot of dirt in there, that's my main concern. It also looks like there's a drain, because I'm getting water running down the side in there. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to take the top back. Yeah. But I am getting water pooling in the uh, tool compartment and down onto the floor and probably even getting into these boxes of bits and laptops as well so I've got to fix that I think the drain's blocked though you can see where it's overflowed and come down there anyway that's interesting, it does work <laughs> I like soft top uh, four wheel drives I actually wanted a uh, Suzuki Sierra for many years I'd still buy one if they were cheap enough, but they seem to command a premium price. They're not cheap. Yeah, there's a moisture issue under the target top as well. I'm sweating like mad on a day like today when the heat gets to it and evidence of extreme moisture buildup. I don't think it's draining correctly, but it is pretty rotten anyway. And that's supposed to hook into the back of the rear door under there. There's a big catch inside it. Yeah. So it's a draining issue. <laughs> This is just what I need. It's the bracket. Yeah, I'd say the drains are blocked. I've got to roll a crappy old fiber optic cable that would make a nice drain snake for these things. It's stiff enough. I think as the vehicle's moving, you get an airflow from here from the front pushing water out the back but when it's not moving it doesn't flow and that hasn't breached yet but I'm going to get onto that yeah we've got a water backup issue but the seals have held out though they haven't leaked into the cabin hmm Okay, well, I cleaned the drains out. <laughs> A lot of water down there. 
Uh, these ones here come out about there, which is a bit odd. I'd expect them to come out under the car, but I'm guessing air turbulence might create a bit of a back backup issue. I don't know. It's just unusual for it to flood down through here to the, the side of the panel. I still have to keep flushing that because I use some very strong janitor's cleaner to flush it out. Same with the other ones. But it worked quite well. Got rid of all the debris and muck. There. These ones are obviously employed during driving. Uh, they shouldn't be an issue, although I'll run a bit of... Uh, I've got a couple of metres of off-cut fibre optic cable. There's the ultra-thin fibre optic stuff for audio. I'm going to run that down there and just make sure I knock anything out of it. Same with these ones here. I'll run a bit of uh, fibre optic cable down it and make sure it cleans out. Don't use steel wire because if it's rubberized tube you'll end up puncturing the side of the tube or something silly like that. Use uh, something soft like polyethylene uh, solid strand or um, fibre optic cable, something like that. But yeah, those drains drain out just under there in the quarter panel. Which is where they should be on the back, but I don't know, maybe there's a, some kind of physics physic reason for it. Probably to do with airflow pushing it back up. I don't know. But either way, that's done for now. I'm going to close it back up because it's going to... Uh, I don't think the weather's going to get too bad, but I've got a live stream to do tonight and I'm not going to get time to do it otherwise. <laughs> I don't want to leave it over the weekend. But yeah, there's a lot of dirt and debris and other crap coming out of that drain. <laughs> Anyway, I've got a bit of a task ahead of me. Let's try and get this top back on. <laughs> well, that was fairly fairly easy. I still need to get these bits fixed, but yeah, that's just old age for you. 1998, 90, MY 1999 car. Uh, not too bad. <laughs> just needs a bit of love and care. At least that's what I reckon anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, well that looks a lot cleaner with no white dirt or oxide or anything. Might even paint the shocks when I've got the back wheels off. I've got to get under there anyway and do everything. Just tidy it up. Got to look at doing those uh, mud flaps next time. Anyway, onwards with the next bit. We've got a live stream to do too. Now, one last thing. Um, I'm actually editing this two, three days later, so forgive me if I've forgotten to conclude the last bit of footage, but um, what you last saw is about two days old, so I just wanted to point out a good website. If you do have a RAV4 and you want some information or you're thinking of buying one, uh, yeah, get onto rav4world.com. They're part of Auto AutoZone or auto, autoguide.com, so there's pretty much a forum for every manufacturer you can think of. I remember this site used to be um, independently run and had a nice archive and all that sort of stuff. I don't know where that is now, but there's still a ton of info on the forums and people are really helpful, so it's well worth looking at, even if you don't own one, or if you want to um, just go to autoguide.com essentially. They've got links down there, Hyundai forums, Kia forums, bensworld.org. They're pretty much assimilating all of the smaller car forums that I remember years ago. Um, the BMW stuff's about the only thing I don't think they got, yeah. There's another big website which had uh, the BMW forums that I frequented when I had the 7 Series. But they're uh, obviously still independent. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's all for now. I'm going to go back to uh, editing videos and tidying up. And probably try and fix that monitor tonight because that is driving me nuts. Poor thing. <laughs> It's been like that for weeks. Anyway, if you put up with the rambling in this video, you put up with anything. <laughs> well, I put up with my own rambling. I can put up with a faulty LCD. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those Mondays. I'm losing my mind. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.